Shalom, family and friends and others interested in participating in the Jewish Legacy video project. This will simply be a demonstration of how to do this for your children and your grandchildren and others who wish to hear about uh, your video legacy. So I have prepared uh, some information that I want to respond to. And uh, let's begin. My name is Richard Dennis Solomon. Today is Friday, April 10th, 2015. And I was born on October 6th, 1943. Thus, I was a war baby. Now, there are two questions that I'll answer. I appreciate the fact that uh, my family generate a whole set of questions, but the two questions that I'm going to answer are, one, what was life in Brooklyn for you? And secondly, why did you become a teacher? So let's begin with the first question. What was life like in Brooklyn? Well, that's an interesting question because why was I born in Brooklyn? After all, my father was born in Belarusia, white Russia, and uh, my mother was born uh, in Czechoslovakia, which was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and they actually met in Brooklyn. And I, as I said, uh, was actually a war baby. Okay, so what was life like in Brooklyn? Well, to me it was fantastic. I didn't know any better that I was born in a poor section. I didn't know that. I didn't know that bedford Stuy was a poor section. Uh, then when we uh, became a bit more uh, wealthy, we'll say, uh, we moved to Crown Heights and ultimately to Sheepshead Bay. I actually thought life was great. We played ball in the streets. Uh, we played ball in the schoolyard. Um, we didn't think we were poor. The poor people were the winos who lived uh, on the street or at night went into the cellar in our apartment building. So we thought everything was terrific. Now, it is true that uh, there were kind of like gangs or people who would congregate together to go to school uh, as a group so we would not be attacked or hit by uh, other people. Uh, neighborhood uh, gangs or, or groups, but we thought that's the way life was. In fact, I recall one incident that when I went to PS 167 in Brooklyn and I came home by myself without going with a group of kids from my block, I was actually jumped and uh, physically attacked by uh, uh, a different group of folks from a different uh, gang. And uh, that was unpleasant. In fact, one of the amusing parts was I eventually escaped, ran away from the group, and jumped into a garbage can. I put the can on top of my head. They ran past me when the coast was clear. I ran home, and of course, my mother was wondering, why did I smell so badly? So life was terrific. I mean, we had school. Um, that's the way we, I mean, we had, well, there was anti-Semitism, of course, with uh, other groups. But we thought that was uh, the way life should be. Okay? Now, one of the things that my parents did, which was amazing, is they took us to the so-called country, the Kocheleen. What was that? That was a bungalow colony in Monticello, New York, for me. And uh, we had eight weeks of delightful play and enjoyment. We had a swimming pool. We had handball courts. Uh, and that my dad uh, was able to uh, come up on the weekends and allow my brother and myself. And uh, we also went up with uh, other members of our family to go and spend uh, eight weeks in the summer outside of New York City, we thought was uh, magnificent, and we thought we were so privileged to be able to do that. Okay, so that was 
my answer to what was life like in Brooklyn for me. It was fantastic, and I loved it, and I was ignorant about any other condition. That's all I knew. So why did I become a teacher? Okay, I became a teacher because of Mr. Norman Kraft. Mr. Norman Kraft was my fifth grade teacher, okay? And not only was he my fifth grade teacher at PS221 in Brooklyn, in the Crown Heights section at that point, but he also ran the after school center. And I thought that was fantastic. So one day after school and you know, Mr. Kraft would play basketball and punch ball and stick ball and handball with us. It was magnificent. So one day I went up to Mr. Kraft and I said to Mr. Kraft, do you actually get paid to play ball with me? I know you get paid to be a teacher, but do you actually get paid to play with me? And he said, absolutely. I said, that's fantastic. Now I know what I want to be. I want to be a teacher and also someone who plays ball with kids. That's my goal. And I came home and I told my parents what I wanted to do. And of course, my parents, uh, in fact, my dad never graduated from high school. And my dad said to me, well, did you ask Mr. Kraft, how do you do that? I said, no. He said, well, next time you see him, ask him how you become a teacher. So next time I saw Mr. Kraft after school, I asked him that. And he said, you have to go to college. Of course, I said, uh, I'm 10 years old. I said, tell me more about college. He said, well, there's elementary school, and then there's high school. We didn't have middle school then. And then you go to college. I said, uh, okay, how do you do that? He said, you get good grades, and you go, and you major in uh, education, and you uh, become a teacher. I said, well, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So to make a long story short, I became a teacher from uh, because of Mr. Kraft. Okay, and uh, many years later, I uh, wrote a book that I dedicated to uh, my parents and uh, my wife and her parents, and I also dedicated to Mr. Kraft. And I wanted to share that book with him, but this was, oh my God, maybe 40 years after I uh, was out of uh, elementary school, but I wanted to find Mr. Kraft. And I couldn't get to see him. I couldn't find him in the uh, uh, white pages. I went to the Board of Education in Brooklyn, and I just couldn't find him. So a strange story occurred in that I was playing in a handball tournament in around, um, oh, let's say, 1992, and I was playing this fellow, Steve Kraft, in a singles game, and he was from Coney Island, and I uh, said to Steve, or at least I thought he was from Coney Island, if he happened to know the name of Mr. Kraft. He said, of course I did. I said, no, wait a second. This fellow might be 80 years old. He taught at PS221. He said, yes, 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 yes. I said, you know him? He said, of course, that's my dad. I said, that's absolutely amazing. So I said, I want you to, I wanted you to give something to your dad. So I ran home, I uh, got this book, and I wrote uh, to Mr. Kraft that he was my uh, second hero. My first hero was my dad. The second hero was Mr. Kraft, and that he um, inspired me to become a teacher maybe 40 years ago. Well, the amazing thing was, Apparently, Steve gave the uh, book to uh, his father, and three days later, Mr. Kraft calls me up and says, uh, Richard Solomon? I said, yes. He said, I got your book, and I deeply appreciate your taking the time to uh, write the uh, notation, and uh, I'm so happy that I had this effect upon you. In fact, I feel like I'm in heaven This is such a blessing for me because not only did you become a teacher, but you became a teacher of teachers. You were a professor. You've written books. And I want to be able to see you. And we became friends. And uh, I saw him throughout the years until, unfortunately, he passed. And uh, it's a lovely story. So what's the meaning of these two things? The meaning of the first story 
that I told you about growing up in Brooklyn. The real meaning that I would like you to understand is that irrespective of where you come from, that doesn't determine what you will be. Each of us has the opportunity to go and create our future. So I didn't know what the nature of my background was, if it was a good or bad. I just said, my God, this is wonderful. I'm going to do what I can with my life. And uh, particularly, I wanted to uh, uh, empower others to be uh, helpful and make this a more caring and loving and harmonious world. The second story about Mr. Kraft, uh, the meaning of that story is how important it is for children and grandchildren to find wonderful role models for you. And find a profession, find something in life that really enables you to give to others. We are about, as Jews, tikkun olam, repairing the world, and empowering others to help uh, others and improve their lives. So my friends and my family, this is simply a demonstration of what the Jewish Legacy video project is about. And uh, I thank you for participating. Thank you so much.